Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Tuesday, July 9th, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from 1 John chapter 2, reading from verse 15 to 17. And it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. We thank the Lord for his words this morning. And so, the Lord, the word of God this morning is very clear. It tells us that we have to make a choice. A choice in whom we will be loyal to. A choice to whom we will be faithful to. Now, it started out by telling us that we should not love the world. Is the word of God saying that you should eat others? Certainly not. What the Word of God is saying is that the things that are of the world, we should not allow our hearts to yearn after them. Now, let's give some perspective to this. First of all, is it that the Lord is saying that you must not desire to have a home? You must not desire to have children, you must not desire to have a good job, you must not desire to have a nice car, to have a good education or these things? Is that what the Word of God is saying? Certainly not. The Word of God is simply saying that these things, relevant though they might be, we must never make them our soul priority. God must always be first and foremost in our lives. And we must not yearn after these things to the point where we are willing to sacrifice a relationship with God in order to acquire these things. And there are those we know will do just about anything to have a nice house. They will make needless sacrifices to have a nice car. And the truth be told is that some of the sacrifices that we do make sometimes to get these things, they come at a great cost to us and to those around us. And when it has reached to that point, when our sole desire is just to acquire the riches the riches of this world, then we know that we are going off the beating path. And that's not where God wants us to go. And so he admonishes us that we must make a choice either to serve him or to serve the things of this world. So it's all good and well to have good jobs, house, cars, and all of these things. But don't forget that these things, God is the one that gives you the strength even to acquire them. And so God must be the first and the last you consult in your pursuit of these things so that he can give you the necessary guidance so that you don't end up making a mess of your life. Because when you think about it, House, money, car, uh, all of these things. These are things that the world prioritizes. And so, if you don't have a good job, or if you don't have a job, chances are you can't eat. If you don't have a roof over your head, chances are you are going to be living on the street. These things are what the world prioritizes. They do not prioritize a relationship with God. 
And these things that the world prioritizes, they are temporary. That's what the word of God say. They are here today and gone tomorrow. You have your house. Today, it can go up in flames. Or the bank might decide to take your home. Or you might lose your home some way or another. So it is not set in stone that even though you pay millions of dollars for your home or thousands of dollars for your home, it doesn't mean that you will have it for all eternity. That's not a guarantee. What is a guarantee is a relationship with God that will last throughout all eternity. And that is what the Lord is saying that we must prioritize. He said in his word, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what? He will add all the other things to you. He will bless you accordingly. Now God is the one that created this world. And all the resources that are in this world belong to him. So it would make sense to go to him who have the resources and not to go to those pretending that the resources belong to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so we must not sacrifice unnecessarily for anything that this world has to offer. Sacrifice for God and then God will bless you and I accordingly. The for the loss of the world the loss of the flesh those things that we just think that we got to have and we seems like we just can't live without them if somebody have a big house we want to have a big house too do you really think you need a big house is it really a, a necessity for you to have a big house or a big fancy car or it is important that you have a roof over your head. And even if it is important that you have a big house because you have a big family, how do you go about prioritizing all of that? So the issue is not so much the thing, but how we prioritize our life and how we set up these things to be forerunners before God instead of God being the forerunners before them. Do you understand now? So God is not saying that it's evil to have these things. But this is not the will of God that we get caught up in this kind of living and lifestyle that the world portrays. Because the world don't believe that. Because the world believe that this is it. And so... Unless you have these things, then you are not saying anything. You will not survive. But is that true? Is that true? The world belongs to God. And if the world belongs to God and you belong to God, there is no way that God is going to allow you to just fade away into the night. And he would not take care of you. So trust in God. Don't, you know, and it's so interesting. And I think I mentioned this a few weeks back. Where we have become so attached to our material possession. To the point where our loved ones, even when we have passed from this world. Or I should say, we have passed from among the living and we die. They pack our sepulcher with all kind of things i've seen beds i've seen television i've seen chairs dresser settee all of these things and i'm like what is going on in this world today why don't we donate that to somebody who do not have it or better yet give it to your family member who is alive so they can enjoy it what is the dead going to do with all of that but you see, that's the deception that Satan has placed in our hearts and in the world today. That somehow, we can still enjoy them. 
even when we are dead. But we know better. The Word of God doesn't teach that. But that's another lesson for another time. And so the point this morning is that we must seek after God. We must not lust after the world, lust after the flesh. We must be content. We must be humble. And what? We must follow God. And then God, according to his wisdom and his will, will bless and keep us all the way. Amen. So again, let us be faithful and let us trust God in Jesus' name. Amen.